So being that you see different demographics of people at different life stages and different ages, how do those factors play into treatment decisions? Ages and the the time in life uh, and season that people are in definitely plays into management of diabetes. It's not just a little like one size fits all and this is what we do anymore. Um, there may be someone that is in teenage years and maybe um, is getting their menstrual cycle, whereas there may be someone that is 15, 20 years later, 30 years in and maybe perimenopausal. So um relationships, situational things like job, losses, relationships um, Mm -hmm. certainly play into stress and hormones and different needs. So I try to tailor plans to patients and kind of their season of life. And as clinicians, there is a lot of buzzing around the word clinical inertia. Mm -hmm. And this is something that both patients and clinicians are dealing with that a lot of us don't want to change. And I get it because it's hard to change. It's hard for me to change. But um, patients, too, have to understand and clinicians that, hey, like, just because we managed your diabetes a certain way last year, it doesn't mean we're going to do it like that this year. Something may change. And I'm going to have to change with it. So clinical inertia is, I'm guessing, the idea that the way that we did things before kind of determines treatment moving forward. Yeah. That sounds like it would be especially difficult coming to something like ADA where there's so many new things developing. Right. In diabetes, it's just this continuous um, cycle of adaptation. And it's an exciting time. I can't imagine managing diabetes 20 years ago when we didn't have all of these resources. But there are so many medications, therapies, and so many things we are learning now about diabetes that we didn't know. And that's really helping patients. But of course, clinicians have to be willing to learn. And it certainly takes time and energy, but it's worth it for patients in the end. Mm -hmm. better outcomes. And with these different demographics of patients, obviously people are coming at different levels of care and even diagnosis. Um, How do you describe your approach to intensifying therapy for patients who may not be meeting their glycemic targets? Sure. So people come in typically to my office that have been traditionally in the managed care system, and they have been usually seen an endocrinologist or a primary care doctor or just not had access to care, whether it's, um, you know, a monetary issue or a time constraint. Um, And then also there's a lot of decrease in specialty care just across the U.S. So a lot of people just can't get the care they need because they can't get in to be seen. So a lot of people have so many things and checks that we need to do and get done. So So we have to figure out, okay, what are the problems? Um, Most of the time, people just don't know. They don't understand how their glucose is being impacted by different things such as food or sleep, or they're just not on the right medications. Um, Helping them understand how medications work is also really essential. Right now, we definitely are seeing a ton of functional medicine and different modalities like non-pharmaceutical approaches, right, to care. And that's not just with diabetes. It's across all areas of care. And many people are hesitant to take medications, even though we know that it will help them. They're hesitant thinking it will hurt them. And so they don't take it. And so a lot of times it's meeting people in the middle and actually spending time with them to explain why something will help them so that they have like a little bit more sense of trust and getting them to those glycemic targets quicker by just helping them feel like they understand, Mm -hmm. you know, and spending time with them. 